Jake and I work for FCA. How many people have heard of FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes? Oh yeah. So here's the deal tonight. I'm excited, I'm super jacked to be here. There's a lot of things that I do that I break. I wreck a lot of things. See, I love horsepower and I love anything with a lot of horsepower in it. And in the time of my life that I've ri driven and ridden things, I've smashed a lot of things. One of the things that I do is I get to work with Snowcross, professional snowmobile racers with FCA. I'm the chaplain. I remember a race we had just recently. This guy comes down a hill, totally fractures his humerus, breaks it in half. Now here's the deal. Whenever you break something, there's something hardwired in all of us that we want to fix it, especially if it's our bodies. It's not like the dude laying on the racetracks going, oh, I think I'll get this fixed in 2018. You know, I mean, you'll just wait a few years. Whenever we break something, we want to fix it. Last night, I was sitting in the back right over there, and I heard this horrible noise, and I looked up, and there's this beautiful girl up top. She dropped her cell phone. It went ding, da, ding, 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 boom, boom, right over there. Why is it with these cell phones that when they get broken, they look like this on the screen, they get cracked. As soon as you break this, as soon as this thing, see, mine's not broken. Mine's clear. It looks perfect. It's an iPhone 6S. By the way, if you have an Android, you should probably just chuck it in Lake Superior because, boo. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway, whenever you break your cell phone, whenever it gets cracked, I work with students all over and their screens are all cracked. It's like, I want to get this fixed. There's something hardwired in all of us that as soon as it gets broken, we want to fix it. Now, if it's important to us, we really want to fix it. Stuff that we own gets broken. Even more important than this, sometimes relationships get broken. Things are going great, and then it gets fractured with our friends, with family. Sometimes some of us come from homes where this is a normal thing, and there's yelling, and it's broken, and it's not fun. And it hurts. And home for you sucks rocks because there's all this screaming and it's jacked up. When stuff's broken, we so desperately want it to be fixed. We so desperately want this love that Tyler was talking about, that Jimmy was talking about, this love that the band is singing about and we're engaging, this love of Jesus to come in and fix the broken. Jesus is a big deal. How do I know that? It's 2,000 years later and we're st we are still talking about him. How many know that Jesus Christ is a big deal? How many know that? That's what I'm talking about. But here's the deal. Jesus comes into this world with a plan and it gets broken. And, and the more important things are, the, the harder it is for us. I'll never forget where I was. Standing in my garage. Doing power tools. My big DeWalt drill. It's all fired up. This kid in my neighborhood, his name's Carson, comes running into the garage. His eyes, eyes are this big. He's like, Jake, you got to come quick. It's your son, Jackson. Well, I don't know if you know this about me, but I have like mongoose-like speed. So I was like chucking around through the back. And I'm, I mean, I'm hauling into the backyard. I left like a trench in the grass. So like a half an hour later when I got to the park, uh, I show up there. Some of you got that. And there's my son. And he's laying there. And I said, what's the matter? He goes, it's my arm. It hurts. I'm like, yeah, I can see why. Because it went like this, and then it took a left right here. <laughs> so I'm like, son, it's interesting because last night Joe, one of our speakers, talked about his son breaking his arm. My son broke his arm, and it hit, it hit me hard because that's my boy. I love my boy. So I, we, we get in my, my truck, and I go hauling down the freeway, and I'm like, Try and stop me now, cops. I got like the, you know, get out of, my son's arm's broken, excuse me, Ossifer. Yeah, so I go hauling up the freeway. I'm like, whoa, going up the, and we're flying in. My son's like, dad, slow down. I'm like, shut up, we got to get. So we get up to the hospital. We get up there, and he's laying in the bed. Guys, listen to me, I'll never forget my son laying there, because I told him they were just going to cast it, and then we're going home. I didn't know that it was fractured and jacked up. And he's laying in a hospital bed, and my son, I'll never forget, my son looking at me when he was uh, nine years old, and his eyes are this big, and there's these huge crocodile tears. And he's like, Daddy, I'm scared. And in that moment, there's nothing I wouldn't have done to break my own arm, snap it in half if it meant that my son Jackson's arm could be better. Because that's my boy, and I love him. I have two kids, and I love both of them to pieces. 
and I'm just an earthly father, and I'm messed up, and I fail all the time, but he's sitting there, and he's looking at me, and this is what his arm looks like. Check out the screens. They had to put plates and screws in his arm, on his all none radius. He had to have two surgeries, and he said, Daddy, I'm scared. I just remember going, there's nothing I wouldn't have done to fix him, because he's my boy, and I love him. I love him so much. See, the God of the universe created you. Heather talked about it last night, knit you together in your mother's womb, Psalm 139. He made you, made you fearfully and wonderfully made. He doesn't make junk. He makes you beautiful. And, and somehow humanity got broken like it just gets started. God breathes the breath of life into humanity. And it's only in chapter 3 of Genesis that we see humanity. And this blows my mind. They basically look God in the face and say, forget you. Yeah, they ate the kiwi or the papaya or whatever kind of fruit it was, right? They ate the fruit. But the sin wasn't the fruit. The sin was they were committing treason against the Almighty. Listen to me. They basically, p- picture this. How many of you have ever played sport, played a sport ever? Okay, okay. So imagine this. Now, if you haven't played a sport, instead of your coach, just use your, your favorite grandpa. But if you've played sport, imagine looking your coach right in the eye and saying, oh yeah, coach, up yours. Yeah. How would that go for you? Hey, coach, up yours. Yeah, I don't want to play the way you want to play. I'm going to do it my way because I'm all that in a bag of chips. You know what I'm saying? How would that go for you? Yeah, not so good. It wouldn't go so well. Please listen to me. The original icons, the created in the image of God, Adam and Eve basically looked at God and said, up yours. We want to do it our way. Forget you. That's why it's so heinous. That's why it's so horrible. That's why humanity gets broken. And as Jimmy said earlier, uh, up here a little bit ago, we're messed up. We are messed up. Top of the rafters over there, all the way over there to the people in the back, the oldest person in here, the youngest person in here. We're messed up. We're broken. And there has to be a fix. So God sent his little boy, Jesus, to fix the problem. God sent his little boy. John chapter 3, one of the more famous verses in all the Bible. Many of you, even if you didn't get the Timothy Award, like Tyler missed out on, have heard this verse, for God so loved the world, right? You see it on the screens that he gave his only son. So that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God had to send his little boy. He only had one son. And because of his love, we've been talking about love the whole night. Because of his great love, he sent his son to fix the problem. Jesus is a big deal. He lived a sinless life. He did incredible things. Healed people, did miracles, fed people from two loaves and a couple of burritos. You know what I'm saying? Like, here you go. Check this. Walked on water. With the, his voice commanded the wind and the waves. This guy was a big deal. That's why I'm following him. He died and he rose again to pay for the, you and I, to give us a chance to do life because he loves you. I believe there's three kinds of people in the room tonight. Three kinds of people. First group of people in this room, and where's my friend Heather? There she is. Uh, Our stiff arm in God. Come right over here, Heather. So Heather gives the biggest hugs I've ever known. Many times she's just about fractured my back. And so I want to demonstrate this because this might be you. And Jimmy talked about it earlier, the rebellious or the religious. Like the people that I call stiff arm and God. So if Heather's God and she wants to come give me a hug, she's coming over to give me a hug. And some of us do this to God. Like God's here and God packs a wallop. I mean, he's strong. Strong. Oh, yeah. Ew. Careful there. Careful. But God's saying, I love you, and I want to lean in on you. But God's a gentleman. He's not going to force himself. Heather could tackle me. She could put me to the ground, couldn't you, Heather? (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) But guys, some of us in this room are doing this to God right now. Our arms are locked. God's saying, I love you. He's not going to deck us. He didn't come to condemn us, John 3, 17. He came to love us. 
And some of us in this room are stiff-arming God. There's a second group of people in this room that I call posers. And you're the ones that put the face on. Heather, you know what I'm talking about. They put the face on, they put the smile on, but the reality is they're far from God. They say all the religious things out of this, but the reality is your heart is far from God. And I believe there's a third group of people in the room tonight. And those are people, like many people have been on the stage, like my friend Heather and I, that we've bowed our knee to the king. And we've said yes to his love and to his forgiveness. Some of us are stiff arming him. He's saying, I love you. I love you. Some of us are posers. We came with our youth group and everyone thinks we got all of our stuff together, but we don't. Ben's going to sing. We're going to sing. And when we're done with this song, I'm going to come back up and give you a chance to say yes to Jesus. To say yes to his love, to say yes to his forgiveness, to say yes to stepping into what I believe is your destiny. Which is to do life with the king. To be rescued by his love. Ben and the band lead us.
Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 4, have a seat, Matthew chapter 4, Jesus says, follow me, gives a command, he says, follow me, whoever that follows me will never walk in darkness, I'm the light of life, John 8, 12, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven, whereby men must be saved, Acts 4, 12, Jesus is a big deal, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Romans 10, verse 9, put your eyes to the screen, check this, right there in the screen, Jen's pulling it up right now, I didn't give her much warning, if it, you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I know that Ben and the band have done this, they're followers of Jesus, right Ben? Amen. Love the Lord. I love Jesus. That's why I'm here. And I'm going to invite you to say yes to Jesus right now in Duluth. Right now, April 2016. To make a decision to follow him, to trust in Christ and Christ alone. He is the cornerstone. He is the big deal. His name's Jesus. All you have to do is come before him and, and ask and receive the free gift of his salvation and his love. Whether you're stiff-arming God, whether you're a poser, it's tonight the night you need to say yes to him. Stop messing around. Eternity's at stake. He loves you. He sent his little boy to die on a cross. We just, sem we just celebrated Empty Tomb Day. Easter, a couple days ago. Easter. He rose from the dead. Our king is alive. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes right now. Everybody in the room. Nobody looking around. If you're not into this prayer, I'm cool with that. But I'd ask you not to be distracting, not looking around. Just you and the Lord. We just sang this song. I want to give you a chance, if you'd like, to experience this rescuing power of Jesus. First thing you need to do if, you're, if you want to say yes to Christ is repent. Repent simply means turn away from. So it's just a prayer. It's like, hey God, it's me, Jake, or whatever your name is. And I know I've done some stuff where I've messed up. Please forgive me. I'm sorry for my screw-ups. Please forgive me, or something like that. Second part of the prayer is to invite him in is to say something like, Jesus, I love you. I say yes to you. Jesus, I need you. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. I invite you to come into my life right now, right where I'm sitting, or something like that. First part of the prayer is repentance. Second part is to invite him in, if you want, right now. Say yes to the love that only Christ can offer. It's going to be totally quiet except for Ben playing for just a few moments. I want to invite you to say that prayer right now. you Jesus come to my rescue where else can I go there's no other name by which I am saved capture me with grace I will follow you prayed that prayer to say yes to Jesus, I'm going to ask you to do something. It's kind of simple and yet it's kind of bold. But I'm going to ask you to have the courage to take a stand for the one who died for you. If you said yes to Jesus, would you be bold enough 
to stand up right now, right where you're sitting, all over the room. If you just said yes to Jesus Christ, stand up right where you're sitting. Stand up. Up there. Oh, yeah. I love it. Oh, praise God. Stay standing. Stay standing. If you're standing up, if you're standing up, if you said yes to Jesus, listen to me. Welcome to the family. Welcome. That's what it's all about. I want you to tell somebody before you leave. I want you to go up to your youth pastor, your youth worker, your friend. Come up to me. Come up to Ben. And I want you to say, hey, I prayed that prayer to say yes to Jesus tonight. Punch me in the arm. I can take it. I'm unusually muscular. Careful with Ben. He's a little, he's a little fragile <laughs> Tell somebody before you leave this room, I prayed that prayer. Go up to your youth worker, your youth pastor. You're probably going to get a hug. It's probably going to be a big one. Welcome to the family.